And so far, we thought about three segments of the through, and this week we're doing number four. Now, if you've got a really good memory, can anyone remember what we did in week one? A long time ago. What? Well, yeah, what do you think, Verity? Love. Ooh. Should we have a look in my giant orange? Now, there's a song that some people sing called The Fruit of the Spirit is Not a Coconut, and it's a really good song. And The Fruit of the Spirit isn't orange either, but it works as a visual aid. So, Verity, come up here. And we'll have a look at the first segment in the fruit of the spirit. And um, let me do, uh, can you pull that bit out with the leaf for me? What does it say? Love. It says love, brilliant. The first one was love. You stand there, Verity. Now, what came after love? Can anyone remember that? Ayla, Joy, should we have a look? Come and see what this one says. Ah. Show everyone. Joy, well done. Um, now. Can anyone remember what the third one was? Barney. Yeah, Barney's dad. Do you want to come and see Barney? See if you, come and see if your dad's right. Come and see if dad's right. Come on, Barney. Well done. Can you pull this bit of orange out for me? One, two, three. Oh, can you tell everyone the word? Hold it up. Hold it up high. <laughs> if you were lying on the floor you would be able to see that the third bit we looked at was patience now who was listening really well in that bit of the bible we just had read oh verity you've burnt your matches you've already got a segment of orange anyone else who might be able to work out what the next segment of the fruit of the spirit we're thinking about is go on Amwen. should we have a look come and see come and see what this one is There we go. Well done, George. Well done. Brilliant. This week, we are thinking about kindness. Kindness. Um, Fab, if you've got a segment of the fruit, why don't you put it here? Thank you. That's really helpful. And like all of the... Thank you, Barney. You are brilliant. Well done. Uh, like all of the bits of the fruit of the spirit, uh, kindness is something that only comes from God. That's not something we can do on our own. And in our true story from the Bible, King David knew that. Now, if you've got that reading in front of me, have a look at verse three, little number three. The king, David, asked, is there anyone left in Saul's family? I want to show God's kindness to that person. He wanted to show God's kindness because kindness comes uh, from God. And as we look at this true story from the Bible more, we're going to see what that kindness looks like, what it looked like in the lives of David and Mephibosheth. And we're going to do that both because this is one of the ways the Holy Spirit helps us keep in step with the Spirit by telling us what the fruit looks like. And we're doing it so we can keep our eyes peeled to see where God might be giving us a chance to be kind uh, like this, that we might grow in kindness. So before we go any further, um, let me pray that God would help us to grow in kindness. Dear God, thank you for this true story from your word, the Bible, that tells us what kindness looks like. Thank you that you don't leave us guessing. So please help us to see kindness in this story and please help us to see the chances we have to be kind. Amen. Okay, now we're going to think a bit about our story. But before we do that, I need your help. Does anyone know who this man is? Does anyone know who that is? Can you put a hand up if you know? Maddie, who is it? Oh, close. Close. He's like the Prime Minister. Yes, go on. King Charles. Uh, first, second. Third, that is right. King Charles III, the new king. Now, everyone knew that he was going to be the next king uh, after Queen Elizabeth. Everyone had known that for a really long time. He had known that for 70 uh, years. But it didn't used to be like that. Uh, it didn't used to be like that. It used to be that when a king or a queen died, there would be all sorts of fighting about who would be king or queen next. So here's a really hard question. Does anyone know who this one is? This is another king. He was king of England.
King Edward. That is excellent. King Edward VI. Now, he um, was a boy king. You can see he was very uh, young uh, in that picture. And uh, he was um, one of Henry VIII's sons. If you've heard of Henry VIII or if you've been to Hampton Court Palace. And uh, after Henry, uh, sorry, after Edward VI died, after he was king, there were two people who could be queen. Now, this is getting really hard. So I'm not going to ask you who these are. This is Lady Jane Grey on, on the left and, and Mary Tudor. Uh, on the right, and there was a big fight about who was going to be queen. And in the end, Mary Tudor, the lady on the right, and her army put Lady Jane Grey and all the people who wanted to follow who her to be queen in this place. Which place is this? Does anyone know what this is? Oh, what's this, Ayla? The Tower of London. She got locked in the Tower of London along with all the people who wanted her to be queen. Mary Tudor, she got rid of all her enemies by locking them up. And in our true story from the Bible, another king has just died, and there are two people who could be the next king, David or Mephibosheth. And David was made the king. So what would happen to Mephibosheth. Would he be locked up like Lady Jane Grey was in the tower? Would something worse happen to him? Well, someone was sent to get Mephibosheth, to bring him to King David. And Mephibosheth was scared because he thought he might get locked up or something much worse would happen. Should we see what happened? Let's see what David said. You've got a little reading sheet in front of me. Have a look at verse 7. David said to him, don't be afraid. I will be kind to you for your father Jonathan's sake. I will be kind to you. And what would he say? I'll give you back all the land of your grandfather's soul and you'll always be welcome to eat at my table. He's not sent to prison. He's invited for dinner with the king. Later on, the reading tells us he was treated just like he was one of the king's own sons. Because that's what kindness does. David wanted to show kindness to Mephibosheth. Kindness, it treats people who could be your enemies as your friends. Kindness treats people who could be your enemies as your friends. And you know what? The Holy Spirit gives us the chance to be kind, just like it gave David the chance to be kind. So I don't know. What could it look like? Maybe you're at school. Who goes to school? Some people go to school. Some people wish they didn't go to school, um, but they go to school anyway. Maybe there's someone in your class. And this child, this boy or girl, no one really likes very much. Maybe they don't get included in any of the games that happen. Maybe they'd be mean to you. Well, here's what kindness says. Kindness says, will you come to play with me? Um, and it, it's kind to them, even if your other friends might think that's a really strange thing to do, to be lovely to this person who's been mean to you. Because kindness, it treats people who could be your enemies as your friend. Now, these words in verse 7, they say something else about kindness to us. Uh, but before we look at them again, I want you to do some more thinking. Who's ever had a bad dream? Who's had a bad dream before? Yeah. And when you're little and you have a bad dream and you maybe go and tell mummy and daddy what's happened, what do your mummy and daddy say or do when you've had a bad dream? What do mummy and daddy do? I'm not going to ask my daughter because that could end badly. <laughs> What happens when mum and dad, when you've had a bad dream? You get a hug. Let me try. What happened, Vela? We pray. We try and try and help you when you've had a bad dream. Okay, here's another one. Who has ever hurt themselves and it's hurt so much? You've fallen over, maybe that you're really scared that I don't know your legs are going to fall off or something. Has anyone done that? Yes. Oh, your arm's going to fall off. <laughs> Dear me. Um, there was a hand up over here. What happens when you hurt yourself like that and you go running to mummy and daddy? 
What happens? What happens, Francesca? Nothing. Oh dear. Sorry, Kirsty. <laughs> Sarah, what does your mum do when you pet yourself? And what did you say? Yes! I'm sure she might help you. I'm sure she might help you. Sorry, Kirsty. Not second time lucky. When we're scared that we're really hurt or we've had a bad dream, mummy and daddy, they make it feel uh, better. Because that's what kindness does. It makes scared people feel safe. Kindness makes scared people feel safe. And I said, didn't I? Then our true story from the Bible, Mephibosheth was really scared about what King David was going to do. Was he going to get put in a tower? Uh, was something worse going to happen? And so he comes into King David's room and verse 6 tells us he bows face down on the floor to say to David, I don't, I'm not worthy to be here. And he says, I'm your servant. And what does David say? He says, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Because kindness makes scared people feel safe. Now, what could it look like for the Holy Spirit to give us a chance to be kind like this? Well, this time, I want you to think about a new person at school, someone who's just come to your school. Maybe they come from another country. Maybe they don't speak very much English. Um, and they don't know where anything is. They don't know where you go to have your lunch. They don't know where you can go and play. They don't even know where to find things in the classroom. And when you went to school, you saw... Actually, you saw mummy and daddy dropping off and, and they were crying a little bit. Well, kindness helps these people who are scared. Maybe it shows them around. Maybe it keeps them company. It makes them feel like it's all going to be okay. Kindness, it makes scared people feel safe. Now, grown-ups. Um, being kind in this way it seems to be particularly important when someone is scared of you, just like Mephibosheth, Mephibosheth was of David. And do you know what? Sometimes people are scared of us and we think, why, why is that? I don't think they have a reason to be scared. But this sort of kindness, it, it thinks, how could I help them? How could I put them at ease? How could I reassure them? This sort of kindness, it goes the extra mile when you know there's a power dynamic at play. Maybe they feel threatened because of your position like Mephibosheth with David. Kindness, it makes scared people feel safe. Number two, number three. Uh, next thing. Um, our true story from the Bible shows us that kindness makes wrong things right. Kindness makes wrong things right. Now, here's another picture of something in London. Who can tell me where this is? Maddie, go on. Buckingham Palace. And who lives in Buckingham Palace? Who lives in Buckingham Palace, Sarah? Third. Yeah, Edward VI and Charles III. It was all a bit confusing, isn't it? That's right. Now that Charles is king, he gets to live in Buckingham Palace. Now, when Elizabeth II was queen, she got to live in Buckingham Palace. And that's what happens when you're the king or the queen. You get to live in a palace. But in our true story from the Bible, King David was given somewhere that wasn't his to be given. Somewhere he shouldn't have been given. He was given some land that belonged to someone called Saul, who was king before him. And he was also Mephibosheth's granddad. And even though the land had been given to David, it wasn't like Buckingham Palace. It didn't belong to him. It belonged to Saul and his descendants, his children. And so what does David say in verse 7 in the middle? I will give you back all the land of your grandfather Saul. He'd been given the land by mistake. And so he gives it back because kindness, it makes wrong things right. Kindness makes wrong things right. So, 
children, maybe, maybe one of your siblings has been told off for something that you've done. Well, being kind, it means admitting that actually it was me, mummy, it was me, daddy. Even if it means you get in a bit of trouble instead of them. Because kindness, it makes wrong things right. Now, there's one more thing. You're doing really well. One more thing I want to show you about kindness from this bit of the Bible. And it's this kindness. It values the vulnerable, values the vulnerable. That's a bit of a mouthful. Let me show you uh, what I mean by telling you a bit more about Mephibosheth. So Mephibosheth is disabled. He can't walk properly. He had an accident when he was five years old and his feet don't work. And I wonder if you notice where Mephibosheth was living. Verse five, he was living in a place called Lodabar. Now, in English, Lodabar means nothing. Mephibosheth lived in nothing town. Who wants to live in nothing town? I don't want to live in nothing town. And it was so much of a nothing town that unlike many places in the Bible, we don't know where it was. Archaeologists haven't been able to find it. Nothing town. And sadly, maybe because of what people had said to Mephibosheth and not being able to walk, he didn't think he was very important. Did you hear at the end of verse 8? I am no better than a dead dog. I'm no better than a dead dog. He had nothing going for him. But David showed kindness to him. So instead of living in nothing town, he gets to live in Jerusalem, where the king lives, where God dwells in the temple. And instead of being no better than a dead dog, he gets to eat at the king's table. He gets treated like one of the king's own sons. David's kindness values him, treats him well, even if other people didn't. Now, what could it look like for God's Holy Spirit to help us be kind in this way? Well, those shoeboxes we were thinking about earlier are one great way of doing that because it means that those children will get a Christmas present when they wouldn't otherwise. But that's just one way. There are so many more ways that we can be kind in this way so many more opportunities the holy spirit might give us adults let me just mention a couple to you uh again uh if you were here last week you'll have heard samuel talk about an organization called international justice mission uh or if you've been here for a little while you will know that robin and kayla and stephanie are involved in an organization called tear fund they are both amazing organizations that show this sort of kindness to people that value vulnerable people But of course, it's not just a problem out there in the big wide world. It can be a problem uh, in our lives as well, close at home. So who among your friends or your colleagues or your neighbours sort of go under the radar? Who's most likely to be marginalised or or overlooked, whatever the reason? Where might the Holy Spirit be giving you a chance to be kind like this uh, to them, to value the vulnerable? We've done really well. Our true story from the Bible has shown us what kindness looks like. And it says, keep your eyes peeled. Look out for the chances that God, by his Holy Spirit, might be giving you to be kind like this. Treat people who could be your enemies as your friends. To make scared people feel safe. To make wrong things right. To value the vulnerable. And if God gives us those chances, we can keep in step. Uh, with his spirit, walk his way, be led by him. So I'm going to pray uh, that you might help us do that now. Again, if it helps you, why don't you close your eyes and put your hands together as we say a quick prayer. Dear God, thank you for showing us what kindness looks like from the Bible. Please, this week, would you give us eyes to see, chances to be kind like this. And please, when those chances come along, would you help us to take them, help us to keep in step with your spirit and grow in kindness. And we ask this, that people might think you are amazing, 
and that it might be good for us too. Amen.